Good evening, nerds. Well, good morning once again. It's Stefano in the bottom left here. As you saw, he's just up against a Korean Terran player over here in the top right of the map. And Mr. Korean looks like he's going for the standard opener, which is uh, gas and barracks, reaper, all that good stuff. Wow, the music's loud this game. But Stefano will be going for the hatch first, as you can see in this beautiful production tab. Made by Blizzard Entertainment. Wow. Uh, gas coming up in the main, and then a pool as well. So hatch gas pool for Stefano here. Last uh, ZBT I casted of Stefano. I thought his style was a bit... Uh... How do I put this in the best way? I'm gonna say greedy. He wanted to get up to ultras really fast, so he skipped the bailing nest for the entire game. Like, it wasn't even, oh, I'm gonna skip the bailing nest early on so I can get a bit better economy. It was, I have four bases, I've got a fifth base going up, but I'm not gonna build a bailing nest, because I want my goddamn ultralisks. And that didn't work out too well for him, because there's just no way he could wipe out the bio. Maybe he needed to go hive a bit faster so he could go straight to the ultralisks and just get them out, because... As said multiple times, and as seen multiple times, Ultralisks are just insane against Bio right now. And if you can get them up on a decent economy, then you can completely wreck face. Um, but that's that's a task in itself. ZBT seems pretty difficult right now. Um, there will be a Liberator nerf coming in soon, which will help out a lot. Because one of the problems is right now, and Stefano doesn't seem to care about this, um, the Liberator opener kind of pushes you into a certain build because there's only three things that deal with Liberators. Corruptors, Muters, and Ravagers. Anything else does not hit the Liberator. Nothing at all. Like, Queens don't hit it, Spores don't hit it. Hydras, actually I'm not sure about Hydras, but I don't want to build Hydras against Terran. And, no, Hydras shouldn't hit it. They, the Liberator goes like 13 range max, I think. I mean, no, that's incorrect. Okay, yeah, Hydras might be able to hit it behind the Mineral Line. Um, it's just if it's in a scenario like this and it's just hitting the Mineral Line, only Ravages, Muses, and Corruptors can hit it. I never tried Hydras. Can't really see a use for Hydras because they will not go well into the mid-game or the late-game. They will purely be there for just dealing with Liberators, and Ravages can do that in a better way. So I don't think Hydras are the way to go. Uh, but yeah, it pushes you down that way. So if you want to defend with a Spire against Liberators, it, it, with the speed it can come out, you basically have to go two base Spire to be able to shut it down. Um, or you have to go Ravages really quickly into a third base, which is the style I prefer more because I don't like going two base Spire. I think it gives you a weak economy and you kind of have to do damage with the Mutalisk if you build them. So, I'm not the biggest fan of it. And then you just die to the bio push because the mules are really strong right now. Now, with that said, Stefano has just completely ignored the fact that Liberators exist. And not built any Spire, not built any, any Roach Warren. Instead, he's just built a bunch of Zerglings to go across the map and attack here like we saw in the previous game. So, he's going to be trying to do some damage over here. He's going to try and find these Reapers and Hellions. Oh, he gets into the main base! That is not supposed to happen, kids! He looks for the Hellion kills, but he's not going to get them, but instead he gets himself a... almost a factory. Now he gets himself a factory, and he finds out that this Korean guy will indeed be going mech. Which is a big advantage. Now he can tailor his tech to deal with that. Um, and his choice to deal with it is going to be the double evolution chamber, as you see up there. Oh god. Oh my god. He did so much damage with this last game as well. This is something I might try myself, because this is two games in a row where Stefano has done incredible damage with this build. And uh, he hasn't been macroing perfectly behind it either. It goes up to like 700, 800 minerals. Um, but that's expected. Um, you have to be perfect with the injects on three bases in Legacy of the Void because of the three larvae thing. Otherwise, you just start floating like this. Sometimes it's easier to just to throw down a macro hatch a little bit earlier so you can spend all of those monies. Uh, but if we look at the Terran player, he will be going back into mech. He's not going to change up his plan here. However, look at his mineral line. That's a sad mineral line like that. Bob Ross would not be happy with this mineral line. Because Bob Ross likes to paint happy mineral lines, not sad mineral lines. That's depressing right there. 
Um, this mineral line looks a lot healthier. And this one is, um, it's getting up there as well. The mules make it happy. They're a shining beacon of hope right there for the Terran player. And that's actually true. They might be able to help him out quite a bit. As they are pretty strong right now in Legacy of the Void. So, we have a late lair coming up for Stefano. Um, similar to the last time, we've got Ling upgrades coming as well. Double Ling upgrades there. Mail upgrades. And I imagine he's going to try and get up to a fast Ultralisks. Um, as he did previously. This time though, he has a lot more gas. A lot more gas. I wonder what he's going to do with that. Because he's going to have to do something with it. He can't just sit here. And stack up his gas forever. He's going to have to get some kind of tech. Otherwise, by the time he gets to Lair. He's going to be... Sorry, the time he gets to Hive. He's going to have so much gas in the bank. He'll either have to spam a bunch of Vipers. Which actually isn't too bad against Mech. I, you know, it's not too bad. Because you want a lot of Vipers against Mech generally. To pick off units and to use the parasitic bomb against air-based uh, mech compositions. Pick off liberators and stuff like that. Ooh, this is interesting. Mech player is actually going to be going for Cyclones. Heavy Cyclone. Cyclone Hellion. I haven't seen too much of this. I have played against it a tiny bit. And I found the best composition to be Infesta, Infesta Roach Ravager. Because the problem with the Cyclone is it can kite almost anything. Unless you get a fungal on it. In fact, it can kite everything unless you get a fungal on it. <coughs> oh my god, I just got fungled in real life. It's getting me, guys. But yeah, basically the cyclone, anything you build um, can be kited other than zerglings. But good luck using zerglings against this many hellions. Good luck with that, buddy. Stefano is going to need some roaches ASAP, but with that said, a massive Zergling attack coming into every single base right here. This is what Stefano is so good at, man. Every single game I watch of him in ZBT, he just cuts down mineral lines over and over and over with these massive Zergling counterattacks. I don't even know how he does it. Whenever I try this kind of stuff, there's always a couple of Marines back at home, there's some Hellions spawning, and then my Zergling is just die. It reminds me of life in a way as well. And this just allows him to get a lead, and he, he can pretty much do almost anything he wants when he gets this many SCB kills and disrupts the economy like this. Um, the Korean guy now has to spread all of his SCVs back over all of his bases, focus on his macro more, delays his attack, removes the pressure from Stefano. It's just such a big play, and now he manages to get his roaches up as well. How many does he have right now? He has three. Okay, he might struggle. Three roaches, that's a lot of Hellions that are going to cut through these Zerg Zerglings, unless he can get a full wraparound. Stefano is coming out now. He's just rallying in there. Not the best play, but the roaches are going to help out a lot now. Zerglings coming in as well. But yeah, these roaches are doing so well against the Cyclone Hellion. Um, he still has that Infestor Pit, which I don't think he's researched from yet. And he has so much gas, like I said he would have. He needs to spend it. He has Adrenaline Links on the way now with 2-2 as well. He did go to Hive really quickly. So it looks like he did want to go for that Ultralist style. With that said though, I don't think Ultralist style is the greatest against the Cyclone style. If, if you're not building Fungal as well. <laughs> Stefano's style is so weird. He literally just builds Zerglings. Like, no Bailings. He's got a Roach on, but he's barely building Roaches, and Roaches would be perfect in this scenario, but he just doesn't care, man. He's all about the Zerglings, and once again, I think he's going to go for that counter-attack. However, he's going to get quite unlucky here, as Korean guy is pathing. He's going to send him across the left side of the map. Well, I said he got unlucky, but he finds all of these Cyclones without too many Hellions in the mix, so he's going to be able to do a lot of damage to them. As you can see, Cyclones are not the best against Zerglings without the Hellion backup. More Zerglings coming across the map. This is ridiculous! It's such a ridiculous style. It just looks silly. There's no other unit. I don't even think he started the Ultralist Den yet. There we go. And I mean, it's only 10 minutes into the game, so it's still a fast Ultralist Den. But the fact is, other than the three Roaches, he's only built Zerglings this game for 10 minutes. And I thought I was the Lord of the Lings at one point. I think Stefano is now the Lord of the Lings. He's taken the crown. Uh, he's got multiple bases coming up now, which is going to help him out a lot, producing all of the Zerglings that he needs. It is a difficult thing to do. 
Um, yeah, he's taken a lot of bases. He's got this one, he's got this one, and he's got this one, which takes him up to technically seven bases, even though he won't be mining from all of them. And now, it looks like Korean guy is still going for Cyclone Hellion. Now, I, I don't blame him. I think Heavy Hellion Cyclone will work out amazingly against the Zergling base composition. And even against Ultralisk as well, Cyclone, like I said, do a lot of damage to Ultralisk, and as long as the Hellions are taking care of the Zerglings, he should be pretty fine. But he does need to take better engagements. Engagements like this one, without the Hellions, and then getting run buys against him as well, are just not working out too well. It's, it's purely the use of the units that Stefano, like, the use he makes of these things. Like, that, they're, they're not the greatest units against the composition the Korean guy has, but the way he uses them, just with counterattacks and finding units out of position, makes them far, far stronger. And you could say it's all mistakes of the Korean guy, but it's Stefano forcing these engagements as well that make it so strong. Looks like uh, Korean guy will pick up the space over here, but no problem, as there are two more bases over this side of the map. And here comes another counterattack for Stefano. This is a lot of adrenaline links. These are going to do. An insane amount of damage, get into the main base here. Two tanks are up with the Hellions as well, can they break in? Taking a lot of damage there, but there's just so many Zerglings flooding in. He lets him into the main base! Korean guy, no, they're gonna shred everything up, they're Adrenalings! This is not good, this mineral line is getting shreked and quacked. That doesn't even make sense. But uh, everything else is getting racked and quacked right now. Tank gets picked off over here, and that's gonna allow Stefano to attack up into... More Zerglings. More Zerglings coming over this side of the map. They're going to work on the planetary. They might actually be able to take it down with Adrenal. Although, if these do go for the repair, he might be okay. But, ooh, good control by Stefano there. Picking off the mules. Now, it's not enough to take down the planetary. Not enough at all. And Stefano is actually floating right now. He can't keep up with the, the mass Zergling flood. He's probably going to need another macro hatch if he's planning to never build Ultralisks and just float gas until the next century. <laughs> <laughs> He's up at 4,000 gas right now. I wonder what... He could just build a bunch of infestors to uh, dump that gas, which would be magnificent, actually. They could lock down the Cyclones and the Hellions and just allow the Lynx to get us around. I feel like at this point, Stefano is just like, screw it. I've gone circling this the whole game. I might as well just rub it in by going even more. Another counterattack! Every time, Korean guy moves out and he just doesn't learn. This might be a planetary sniper. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough Zerglings. They are 3-3 three, three Adrenal. Oh my god. I, I got it all wrong. 3-3 three, three Adrenal links are pretty damn good. Into the other mineral line as well. Can they get to that tank? Looks like one Zergling. Oh, what a boss. He does so much damage as well. What an absolute boss. More Zerglings on the map for Stefano right now. And guess what's in the production tab? Zerglings. 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 Zerglings, Zerglings, non-stop. It just doesn't stop. It's the, it's the flood, man. It's the flood. That's what this replay cast is going to be called, the flood. And um, basically, if you were in this game, you would drown in Zerglings. You wouldn't be able to breathe. And let me guess, there's going to be another counterattack. Is that what's going to happen here? Oh, Stefano, I know you too well at this point. Korean guy might be catching on, though. It's a full wall up here, but it, with Adrenal Links, he can just get this down so quickly. Look at that damage. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't look amazing, but this is a full wall up here, and he just breaks through with no bailings, not even caring. He's going to start working on that depot as well. But, as said, now it's getting to the point where the Zerglings are doing basically nothing, except for pulling the Korean guy around. He will get a bunch more SCVs, which is massive, obviously. Oh, he's going to get all of the SCVs. And that's purely because of the positioning of the Korean guy. Um, he has the army to beat Stefano's links right now, but he just got... <laughs> Stefano's... He's joking around. Any unit. I don't know. Would any unit be better than Zergling? I don't think so. Like, with the way it's going with the Korean guy always getting caught out of position, I don't think any unit would. I think a an Infestor... Infestor dump would be amazing just so he can fungal the units of the Korean guy. But at the same time, like... These links are just destroying every mineral line over and over and over. There's nothing left in the main. There's nothing left in the natural. There's barely anything on the third base. And once again, we've got another counterattack coming out for Stefano. Now, the Korean guy is going for the kill here. 
But at the same time, that's not the biggest army in the world. And Stefano is going to kill everything. There's nothing back at home anymore for the Korean guy. Except for Widow Mines. But I don't think four Widow Mines are going to cut it. Especially if Stefano notices. Is he? Yep, he notices. Oh, oh god! Yep. It's not enough. He, he kills more SCBs than he does Zerglings. And that's the end of his base. It's all gone now. That was uh, actually my first words as a baby, by the way. All gone now. I used to eat Weetabix. Oh, he does it with queens on the defense. Queen Zergling. He's built no other except for the three roaches. It's been only Queen Zergling. And the queens haven't done anything in the whole game except defend against these cyclones back at home. And here comes another 34 Zerglings to clean up these cyclones. The guy is just scanning like crazy like now. I feel like he's a bit rustled. GG. Stefano takes it down. With pretty much only Zerglings. Wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. I, I can appreciate that. That makes me happy. I hope you enjoyed this replay cast, guys. And I will see you nerds tomorrow for another one. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. <laughs> oh, man.